ไอ้ออริจินัลเนี่ยซื้อไปมาจนเราจริงๆนี่เดียวมาบ่เอาเนี่ยนี่เนี่ยคันน่ะมุขเนี่ยซ้อมเนี่ยต่อมาขึ้
ကိုယ်ဒီကိုကိုနဲ့ကိုယ်ဝေပြုတို့ကိုအချင်းချေဆုံးတင်ရှိပါတယ်။ဆက်လက်ပြီးခန္ဓာစီစဉ်တော်များ
Bib Biblical University ma tu sakni tage bare. Na bido di San Francisco Baptist Church ma tu di kichen durari e tu chamuri kuri bisi nasi bu bu bido nade tage zu bu bet tu ba ni na sam yede te chwa ni ni tiap chwa ni. Na di kichen sane kichen sekabu ni ni na bu chere na au te ni na au ni na ni 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 tiap chwa ni. Ah je nua tu ba di di bama bi ma di ni ma institute of theology ma. Di English department mah tu, jam siang je, saya kira lebih cepat. Nah, di saya pun agak sedikit lemah sedikit ni. Di logistik kod ni dah ni, semerti semerti yang pas international relief organisation mah tu, saya kira lebih cepat. Ya, rumah sama. Nah, dia macam tu, sebab dia macam tu nak baru, dia macam tu cepat. Oh, dia nak lebih sedikit lagi. Kalau dia kulit sih mah, di bawah dia je kita ada sama je. U.S. campaign for U.S. campaign for Obama is the executive director, co-founder of Trump. To our solution, the government, 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 Nah, di US campaign for Obama kan, macam ni di sini macam cerita dia berjauh. Di American Senate Congress yang pada dia, di China kan, di sisi kan dia macam ni macam macam ni buat siapa yang dia, dia topo di sini di tempat dia ni, di di activist dia, ni macam dia tu cakap dia macam apa? Eh, tu ada di Congress tu, Senate tu macam ni macam ni, ni oh oh si cakap ni dia, ni macam dia orang dia cakap ni dia ni apa baru, di di magazine jadi, di mana orang itu dalam magazine jadi, si Asia magazine jadi di mana tu, ni ada opinion PC di mana, Asia Times, Wall Street Journal, Foreign Policy, atau nama Inggris, atau nama India, atau nama itu dia di dia orang magazine mana ni tu ada, saya ada di sana. Now, di kena sebut yang American University School of International Studies mah, Master Degree of International Studies tu, ya si jadi di sana. Now, si jadi di sini orang Malaysia mana, graduate diploma. In business administration, the technical department is here to do that. Now, when you go to the general, when you go to the general, they are here. When you go to the engineer, they are here. They are here. So, when you go to the general, you are here. So, 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 you are here. International Rivers Carriage, Chanaru Layao Dio, Sagar Dobine, Miss Chris Mengu, Chanaru, Wamiya Wanda, Chosu Wai, Tuye Tokati Lue, Chanaru Diyani Lue, Ingli Lue, Tatwa, Tatwa Diyasi, Miss Chris Mengu, China Group at Kinbeng Coordinator, Pim Dio, International Rivers Mahalo Lue, Miss Mengu Coordinates International Rivers Efforts, to strengthen the environmental and social standards of China's overseas chain builders in their global environmental footprint. Before joining International Rivers in 2002, she worked as an envir environment and water policy advisor in the Australian Prime Minister's Department on major environmental reform issues such as river basin management of Murray Darling Basin national environment protection laws and biodiversity protection strategies. Ms. Meng is a lawyer by training and specializes in environment and water law. She graduated from the University of Sydney with a degree in economics and law. Welcome, Ms. Meng. And now we have a general alumni, a general alumni, a เราลงเทียบกันอาคุสุนย์เนาะยังบอกว่าปีนี้มายังบอกเชื่อมโยงกับอเมริกาเลยจังหวัดเราเนี่ยไม่ใช่คอมมอนซ์มาเลยนะค
ไม่เนี่ยอะไรมาโพนอภาษาอีกท่านเลยสุดยอดมาจีมาจีเซียนเปียยีเอวิดอวิดอวิมาถ้าถ้าถ้าเกิดสักสักวิเยโฮสุด
Chinese overall investment globally, um, its investment in other countries. Um, so in the 1970s, it was really focused about getting investment inside China from uh, other countries such as um, the United States and whatnot. But in the, the, the mid-1990s and the early 2000s, the Chinese government changed its policy and it adopted the going out policy. Um, in doing so, it encouraged its own enterprises, its own state-owned businesses uh, to invest overseas. And so we see a, quite a dramatic rise in Chinese investment overseas. Um, and this correlates with Chinese investment in Burma. Um, next slide. So why do they adopt the going out policy? Why did the Chinese government do this? Part of it was that they had acquired a lot of technology and knowledge. Um, if you remember the Three Gorges Dam that was built in China, one of the biggest dams in the world, it was built with the help of European turbines and European contractors. In doing so, China acquired the knowledge and the know-how in how to build these mega dams and has emulated a lot of the technology and the, the know-how and are now able to do this all around the world and inside China. Also, the domestic market has been saturated. Um, if we look at the dam industry, for example, the energy company such as China Power Investment, which was developing its own dam, um, has a saturated uh, market whereby energy prices are kept low in China so that there can be continuous economic development. And so the Chinese companies are looking for new markets, um, whether or not they be in Southeast Asia, in Africa, in Latin America, so that they can grow their profits. Um, it's well known that the energy producers and the energy companies in China make a loss, and they're looking at uh, overseas markets to build up their profits. Um, so that meant that they were looking for overseas markets. And the other main driver of China's investment overseas is that they need to secure resources to meet domestic growth. Um, that can be uh, resources in terms of iron ore. From where I come from in Australia, China is one of the major investors in the iron ore and major buyers of iron ore and coal and gas in Australia. The same for many African nations and the same for Burma. China is very interested in um, getting access to oil and gas, uh, which, China, uh, which Burma has access to, and building pipelines across Burma to transport those resources back to China. So what, what did this mean and what did this mean for global investment? This is a, is a graph um, that was reproduced by the Financial Times newspaper and it's not very clear at all. But it shows the change in Chinese investment. As you can see, they had about 0 to 2% investment in countries like Brazil, um, in parts of Africa where they were seeking access to resources in 1992. And the next slide. And by 2010, countries like Australia, African nations, Latin American nations um, have more than 20% of their uh, trade with China. So over a very short period of time, we see China dominating bilateral relationships and bilateral trade relationships with many resource-rich countries. And Burma is no exception to that. But Burma had, I guess, the special situation whereby sanctions had meant that it had very few trading partners and China became the number one, uh, uh, or the major trader um, and investor in Burma. Now looking at um, China's role, I'm focusing on Chinese dam builders. And you know, about five or 10 years ago, um, International Rivers realized that it wasn't the World Bank, it wasn't Western financiers and US corporations investing in dam building, it was the Chinese. Um, and so we developed the China program to respond to this and to be able to monitor China's global environmental footprint and work out how to work successfully and engage China. Um, so China obviously has large dam expertise and it's exported that to other, other parts of the world. It's building large dams in Africa and, and almost every continent um, it's doing this. It can do this because it's supported by cheap loans um, and, and very cheap deals supported by Chinese sovereign banks such as China Export Import Bank and China Development Bank. 
and it's doing this under the guise of bilateral relations, whereby the Chinese government and the host country government is brokering these deals at very high levels and bringing in the Chinese state-owned enterprises to mine and to build dams in these countries. Okay, so this still hasn't done that at all very well. But what it does show is that currently China is associated with 290 projects in 68 countries. And what the different circles represent is the intensity of activity. Um, the, most of the activity is focused in Africa and Southeast Asia. There is some growing projects in Latin America. Um, but in Southeast Asia, 50% of the projects that are in Southeast Asia are in Burma. The next slide. And who are these Chinese dam builders? Um, they are a range of engineering companies and contractors that are all state-owned. And this chart shows some of those, those companies. Um, all of these companies, while they may not be active in the world, are all active in Burma. They all have projects in Burma. Um, and Sino Hydro is the biggest dam builder in the world now. It has over 50% of the international market, um, and it was one of the contractors in its own dam, and I assume will help to build the other dams in those cascades. China Power Investment Corporation, which is this one down here, its first project was the Upper Irrawaddy Cascade. Um, so it's a relatively minor player in the world, but it saw the Irrawaddy Cascade as its you know, uh, first big, massive, important project um, outside of China. Um, so the next slide. And so now I want to focus on Burma a little bit. Um, based on our monitoring, we believe that there are 68 Chinese dam projects in Burma, and that represents 50% of all the Chinese investments in Southeast Asia. So Burma is, is, is an area where Chinese companies are focusing, and that's partially because of the strong bilateral relationship between China and Burma. All the agreements, from what we can tell, were agreements signed with the military junta. None of the dam projects have been signed um, since uh, the, the civilian government has been installed. And we believe that most of the investments are risky because Burma has lacked so far environmental protection and social protection laws. Um, I understand that uh, the requirement to conduct an environmental impact assessment is, is, is not required so far, but there are, there are reforms uh, well underway to um, adopt the first environmental impact assessment law um, in Burma. So for the Midstone Dam project, there was no environmental impact assessment required as a matter of law, um, but one was conducted by the Chinese anyway. And hydropower development um, has been done to meet China's energy needs as well as Burma's energy needs. Um, Burma's uh, needs for electricity are forecast to grow at 15% per year. Um, but in China, the energy appetite of this country is quite large. And already in China, um, in the next five years, they plan to add one Three Gorges dam per year for the next five years. Um, just to meet the hydro, hydropower demands in that sector. Uh, so China is a massive dam builder and it's continuing to build dams in Burma to meet its own electric, electricity needs. So where is the Midzone Dam? And I think you all know where the Midzone Dam is. But the Midzone Dam is at the confluence um, of two rivers and, and I, I've been told the headwaters of the Irrawaddy River. So it's in northern Burma, very close to the Chinese border. Um, and this photo shows the, where the dam was to be built. And it was to be built right across the confluence of two rivers and flood and create a reservoir the size of Singapore. And of all the dams that I come across, um, about 290 dams that I'm aware of, this, I think, was the most, one of the biggest dams and one of the most destructive dams in terms of the area it would submerge. Um, but the Midzone Dam is just one dam, and it's part of a cascade of dams, seven dams along the Mali and the Namai, the rivers. And this is just a map showing um, how the, the seven dams. And while the Midzone Dam has been suspended, none of the other dams have been suspended. 
and together they would have created 20,000 megawatts of electricity, which is close to the size of Three Gorges Dam, uh, just to put it into some perspective. The Three Gorges Dam is at 22,000 megawatts. It was estimated that up to 20,000 people would have been resettled by the dam projects and 90% um, of all the electricity generated was to go to China. Um, so just some facts about its own dam. Um, it was signed, uh, it was agreed in 2005 um, between Asia World Company and China Power Investment and the Burmese um, Electric uh, Agency, Electricity Agency, uh, to go ahead and look at the feasibility for this dam in 2005. With the final agreement to build the dams and how they would be funded in 2008. China Power Investment was the main project developer, and from what we could tell, it was funding all the all the investment into these dams. Burma would not have to provide any money up front. Um, the total investment would have been three point six million dollars, a billion dollars, to build its own dam, which I think is quite a lot. Um, but overall, the entire cascade of the seven dams would have cost twenty billion dollars. And that's all money that China Power Investment would have put and, and, and taken for itself um, and put into building these dams. In return, 90% of the power would be exported to China and 10% of the power would remain in Burma. And this was one of, I think, the major criticisms um, from the Burmese environmental groups was that very little of the power would actually go to meeting Burma's needs. Um, while they would have generated some revenue from tax, it was very much, I think, a deal done in favour of China. Um, and the environmental impact assessment, as I said, it was not required under Burma's, Burmese law, but it was conducted, but it was conducted with very, very little consultation with local communities, and it was done with very little transparency. Only five days before the Midtown Dam was suspended was the final environmental impact assessment publicly released. Um, and what were some of the environmental concerns? Um, I studied the environmental impact assessments quite a bit, and while these are not criticisms, these are gaps which I think were missing and that um, Burmese groups agreed needed to be um, analysed before the dam project continued and it's for these, some of these reasons that the president of Burma had suspended um, the dam project and were nominated in his letter to um, the parliament. The first is the seismic risks of its own dam. There have been nine earthquakes within a 150 kilometre radius of this dam site in the past 20 years. It was within um, several fault lines and um, it wasn't clear what the impact of the reservoir would have on increasing seismic activity in the dam site. Um, China Power Investment, to their credit, spent three years apparently looking at the seismic risks and said that the dam structure would withstand a magnitude 8 earthquake in this region. But there was no evidence that they had looked at what impact the reservoir, the heaviness of that reservoir that was the size of Singapore, would have on increasing seismic activity um, in this region. And we've seen from other studies that reservoirs, particularly really heavy reservoirs, can trigger earthquakes. Um, and so this was a question that we had and the Burmese NGOs had as well. What were the downstream impacts on the community and the Delta ecosystem? Um, the EIA didn't look at any of the downstream impacts. The justification by the scientists, the Chinese scientists that did the environmental impact assessment, they said because the flow regime, the, the water discharge by the dam would be similar to what would naturally occur, there would be no problem. But we all know that it's not just water, the, the quantity of water that's important, it's also about the quality of water. Would it be turbid? Would it be dirty water? Would it be of the same temperature? Would it have the same oxygen content? And we know that the Irrawaddy Delta and the Irrawaddy River system is very, very complex and there was no evidence of any examination of what the downstream impacts would be on the Delta ecosystems, which far, far down are very, very complex. Um, and what would actually happen downstream um, from the dam. These were not looked at, they only looked at all the upstream issues, but none of the downstream issues. 
Um, so it was very, very simplistic. The third issue was sediments to be held with Mitzon Dam. Um, after 100 years, the dam would have been, 80% uh, of the dam reservoir, which is the size of Singapore, would have been filled with sediments. It would have had very little water in it, but would have been filled with mud and silt. Now, this is a major problem with the Three Gorges Dam, um, but, you know, what would happen if all this silt was withheld from the delta areas? There's been studies done that um, sedimentation is really important for the delta. The delta would have actually receded over time, um, and that uh, this would have affected the health of the delta system overall. And the fourth final issue was how this dam would have um, operated under changed climatic conditions. We all know that climate change is happening and altering weather patterns. But the, and in Burma, the, uh, the Intergovernmental Panel um, of, of Scientists on Climate Change have said that there will be increased floods, increased cyclones in Burma with the impacts of climate change. And it was not clear how this dam would be able to prevent floods while at the same time storing at large amounts of water required to generate hydroelectricity. It was a massive contradiction and um, these are issues that are played out in dams all over Southeast Asia that they pretend to be flood dams as well as hydropower dams and the two are not compatible. Um, so this would have had huge issues for downstream communities and major cities downstream from the Irrawaddy Dam. And my final um, concluding statement relates to what was International River's ro role. Um, through the China program, we supported the host country NGOs and will continue to do that. Um, there are plans underway to bring experts to Burma, international experts, to look at the EIA and uh, try and get the dam uh, uh, cancelled instead of suspended. We've also tried to provide training opportunities for uh, Burmese activists to better understand China and Chinese dam building. And we've provided analysis and information. Um, earlier this year, we were asked by the Burmese NGOs to write a brief uh, for Aung San Suu Kyi's office, and we did that. And we believe uh, that was part of the information she looked at to write her saying the Irrawaddy appeal. We also provided significant information in the lead up to the cancellation of the suspension of the dam to the president's office um, in terms of what were the gaps in environmental information and provided that through Burmese environmental NGOs. What's very clear is that Burmese environmental NGOs lack the capacity to analyze these huge uh, bits of, of data that's being thrown at them by the Chinese. And that's one area that we've, we will continue to focus on to build their capacity. More generally, we provide advice on how to work on China. Um, with China, protesting doesn't work and it's more likely to anger the investors. And so you need to be smart and constructive in the ways that you engage with China. And so to that end, we've produced an activist guide to the Chinese dam building industry. Um, and have several other uh, strategies to work on China. And we do policy advocacy with Chinese dam builders. Um, we heard that Sino Hydro, um, because we have a policy dialogue, was very concerned about the cancellation of its own dam and did not want to repeat this mistake um, with many of their projects. And so we're back through our constructive engagement with China's dam builders, we're better to, um, able to understand where are the common points of view and where are the differences so that we can try and change their opinions and provide them with more information. And uh, the suspension. So I think you probably all know the, the lead up to the suspension decision, um, but I wanted to highlight some of the key things that happened very quickly towards the end of this year. Um, in August 2011, Aung San Suu Kyi offered uh, issued her appeal to save the Irrawaddy River. This was followed by um, a workshop in September 17th um, that was hosted by the government, but it was the first public signs of division within the cabinet about whether or not its own dam should continue. And then we saw that the, uh, the environmental impact assessment was released as a reaction by the Chinese uh, about concerns about their, their dam project. But it was September 30 when the president of Burma suspended the dam. The CPI president said, I was totally astonished um, by this decision. And that's because they failed to engage with uh, the movement in Burma and failed to um, even 
understand what was going on in Burma. It's funny because the Chinese government actually a few months earlier praised all the contractors for creating, I think, quote, an island, um, an island of China floating above the Irrawaddy. Um, they had closed off all um, the, the company and the construction to any of the Burmese that they thought it was a small Chinese nation um, building this dam. And obviously that meant that they were totally surprised when the dam was suspended. And that's it. Thank you for your attention.